Judge. Good afternoon, Mr. Bradley. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Sorry, under these circumstances, um, I'm going to just go straight to where we left off before. Um, Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade were in a romantic relationship, correct? Correct. And um, it began at the time that they were both municipal court judges, correct? I Objection, Your Honor, based on privilege. That would be covered in the attorney Okay, overruled. I do not have knowledge of it starting um, or when it started. Um, Terrence, you told me that it started when they were both municipal court judges, though, correct? That is incorrect. Um, you never confirmed in writing that it was instead of magistrate court, it was in municipal court judge when they were started dating? If you're speaking of the text message, you can go to that text message and you can read that text message and I will explain the text message to you. But you and I did not have a conversation about when it started. You asked a compound question of magistrate court versus, I mean, you, you said it was magistrate court municipal, mag, I mean, you said uh, mag, magistrate court conference, I'm sorry. Um, and then you asked another question. I said, no, municipal court, nothing else. I'm referring to a different um, conversation. I asked you, do you think it started before she hired him? No, no, I'm going to object because this was covered uh, in the previous hearing where um, Mr. Bradley said he had no personal knowledge of the exact text that Ms. Um, Merchant is speaking of and actually used uh, in, a, to, in an attempt to refresh his recollection. And he explained exactly um, what he's explaining here before the court. So this is uh, repetitive and unnecessary. And so I would object to asked and answered and, and relevance at this point. All right. Uh, perhaps we'll get there. But I think first, Ms. Merchant has the right to draw his attention to the exact potentially inconsistent statement. Thank you, Judge. Um, may I approach him? It's overruled. This is you may. the text that you asked. And for purposes of the record, uh, I believe, Ms. Merchant, you tendered, was it the entire text chain as an exhibit? Um, I only tendered a few of the texts, but I did give the state their, co their courtesy copies last time um, of the exhibits. Was this one tendered? This one was not tendered. No. All right. And I'm happy to tender it. Well, we'll just... Take it as it comes. Whatever you we're need. at, um, I, think, I think we're at 39. <laughs> I, I will wait to mark it, um, but I think we're at 39. May I approach, Judge? You may. Um, so, Terrence, do you remember telling me that it started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton? I see the message there, but I, I don't recall. Um, I do see that message, but I do not recall. You don't recall texting this? I look back at my text messages um, through uh, that we've had. I see that message, but I do not recall that, no ma'am. Um, and when I asked you if you start, if you thought it started before she hired him, and you responded, absolutely. Your Honor, I'm going to object as to the source of the information um, that Mr. Bradley allegedly uh, gathered this from. Um, there's been absolutely no foundation, um, and based on the arguments of the last hearing, that a lot of this is based on gossip, innuendo, assumption, uh, and privileged information. And at this point, Ms. Merchant has not uh, provided a foundation as to how Mr. Bradley would have any information that she keeps uh, referring to. All right. I think so that's... I, go ahead, Ms. Merchant. I, I didn't ask him about the source of the information. Um, and under Rule 621, I can impeach him with any inconsistent facts. This is an inconsistent fact. I can impeach him with any contrary facts. Sure. Why would it fact. be a relevant uh, impeachment if he actually has no personal knowledge of this? If he doesn't. Sure. So I think knowledge. you have to lay that foundation then, so that'll be sustained. Um, do you remember telling me that it began... Well, that's, that doesn't address the issue. No, I'm not. I was, I was just asking if you remember telling me as opposed to the okay, text. Okay, sure. Do you remember telling me that it began? Well, no, and then you're going into the substance of it, which we haven't determined whether he actually knows or how he knows. Um, you told me, in fact, you corrected me 
when I said magistrate court, you corrected me and said it was municipal court. Yeah. Do you remember that? Same objection, Your Honor. This is, this is the exact same issue, right? Well, yeah. I'm asking if he remembers that. He hasn't answered that question yet. Right, but the relevance of whether he remembers it isn't established until we know how he remembers it or why he knows it. Okay. If that makes sense. I guess not. <laughs> Sorry. How he knows it? I'm, I, I'm right. just asking if he told me that. Right. So I wasn't asking how he knew that. I wasn't asking the source of that knowledge. I was asking if he told me that. Sure. That's it. But I, that's the point. It's how he knows it. Right. The source of his knowledge, the state would contend, is hearsay because it's gossip and innuendo, um, which is what was indicated the last year. Well, it may not be hearsay. It may not be gossip. We haven't really gotten there yet. We don't know how he knows what apparently he's telling her, and I think we need to figure that out before we can go any further. Yes. And if the source of the information is a witness who've testified, then it's not hearsay. Um, so when did the relationship start? I cannot answer that. Uh -uh. When was your first knowledge of the relationship? Objection, Your Honor. He's already answered that question multiple times today. He said he has no idea the timeline or, or when it occurred. That was one of the first questions that Ms. Murphy asked. I didn't ask when. I asked his first knowledge. He testified he has knowledge that they had a relationship. I asked him when he first got knowledge of that. Okay. So if the question is when did you first get knowledge, I think we can start there. That was the question, yes. Right. Thank you. When did you first get knowledge of their relationship? I've said over again that I was not, I didn't have any personal information where I could personally say when it started. I've said that time and time again. And, and so I don't, I don't know when the relationship started. And that wasn't my question. So mm -hmm. my question is, when did you first gain knowledge? I didn't ask the source of the knowledge, didn't ask you to comment on the validity of the knowledge. I asked when you first had knowledge. We'll get to the how, Mr. Abadi. So I'll uh, note the objection, overrule it. You can answer that. Just for the record, I appreciate your honesty. Um, but he said he has no personal knowledge, so it's clear he had to gain the knowledge, not from, from hearsay. He could have gained it from sure. Mr. Wade. Well, I mean, most of us learn things from hearsay, the question <laughs> of whether, whether it's admissible, right? And that's what we gotta get to, so. I apologize. Right. Um, when did you first get knowledge? I'm not qualifying what type of knowledge. I'm just asking when you first knew about the relationship. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, so I can't give you a date if you're asking for a date. If you're asking me how did I get the knowledge, it would have come directly from a client. Right. So help me understand. I think you say you can't answer that question. You don't know the date. So that's the answer to the question. But I, I said that five minutes ago. We have to make it clear. Yes, sir. Right. Next question, Ms. Merchant. So you don't know the specific date? No. Do you know if it, can we narrow down the timeline? Was it, did you gain knowledge in 2019 of this relationship beginning? I'm going to object to this line of questioning as he said he does not know sure. when he gained the right. He overrule. doesn't know the specific uh, date. That's fine, Ms. Merchant. I think we, I'm overruling that. I think we can try to see if he can narrow it down based on goalposts. Thank you. Um, 19, I would probably say no. I mean, I, I don't have anything that I'm, I'm, um, there wasn't a specific date. There wasn't a football game, there wasn't something that I can attribute to him telling me whatever. And so you're asking for a date, you're asking for a year, it's still a date. And at this time, I am telling you that I do not have the date. Um, let's try this then. So you received a contract from Ms. Willis, um, January 2021, correct? Uh, can I see the... Uh, yes, I yes, I think so. Are, I think, okay. I think, I, I think and, and um, if it was from the uh, exhibits, I think it was 21, yes. And I don't want to belabor the point. You admitted those <clears throat> yes. when you were here before. Yes. Um, if those documents that you looked at last time. Yes. Said January 2022. That's okay. 21. I I'm didn't, sorry, 21. You're right. Thank and you. And it was, sure. I think, renewed in 22. It was, yes. So the contract date was um, that we have in the record is January 25th, 2022. So using that date, at that point, had they begun their romantic relationship? Of 2022. January 25th, 2022. 2021, I'm sorry. When you got your first contract. I, I 
I don't recall. Um, I don't recall any any specific uh, dates. No, ma'am. You remember when you got that contract, though, correct? I remember I had the contract, yes. Okay. And you told us last week, or I guess it was the week before now, you told us that Mr. Wade brought you that contract, essentially told you about that contract. That is correct. Um, so Ms. Willis is not the one that brought that contract to you directly. It was Mr. Wade. That is correct. At that point in time, they were already engaged in a relationship, though, correct? I'm going to object, Your Honor. I can't say that. The characterization of what Mr. Bradley just said. He just said he does not remember. There's nothing specific. He doesn't remember the exact date. And I think the question now is to reference it or tie it to maybe some other event that he might remember. I agree with Your Honor. She asked that specific question. He said he does not remember any specific dates after signing the contract. That's exactly sure. what he just said. This is asked right. and answered. I know. And we're getting to the end of it. So, Ms. Merchant, you don't have much more to pull on here. But he answered that last question. So what's your next one? Um, and, and Judge, I, I didn't hear the answer if they were in a relationship right. January 25th, 2021. Mr. Bradley, do you recall the question? I, I, I recall the question, and I can't tell you accurately whether or not they were in a relationship at the time. You asked me about him bringing me a contract. I said he did bring me a contract, and that is accurate. Do you remember prior to, do you remember knowing Ms. Willis prior to her taking office as the DA? I had very little contact with Ms. Willis. Um, I knew her um, through my business of coming down to Fulton, if that's what you're asking. Yes. You knew her through the business. Um, so had you had met her prior to your contract? I'm going to object to relevance at this point as to why we're here today. Sure. Judge, he doesn't remember much of anything right now. And so I'm trying to create a timeline to hopefully piece this together. All right. Well, um... I'm not seeing really that the likelihood that that's going to have any success. I'll, I'll let you ask a few more questions, but if he doesn't have a date, then I don't know that you're going to be able to create one today. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so the time that you had this contract from January 2021 until January 2022, did you come in and out of the DA's office? Yes. Okay. And so were you able to witness Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis interact during that time? I'm going to object. This has been asked and answered. It was addressed at the last hearing about Mr. Uh, Bradley's access to and from a specific room to pick up files. And Mr. Bradley said that sure. he rarely saw them together, um, but this was answered. Yeah. I think the only avenue that was closed at the last hearing was his personal knowledge, potentially through well, actually, no, if he testified, it was that he had no personal knowledge. It's knowledge that conveyed to him that was cut off at the last hearing. That's really the only thing we hadn't been able to explore, unless you correct me if I'm wrong. Knowledge that was conveyed to him by? By somebody else. That's, that he claimed at the time was privilege. I found that it's not. That's what we're here to explore. Okay. Um... Do you remember telling me that not many people knew where they met? I'm going to object as to relevance, as to his personal knowledge, yeah. which is what 602 requires. Yeah, I mean, we're back to the same point, Ms. Merchant. His personal knowledge is what I'm asking him what he told me. But he hasn't yet told you how he knows that. And so if, unless he, he can establish why he should be testifying on this at all, then there's no relevance. <laughs> And I don't know what, how he knows that. That would, be the next, but that would be the next question. Then but ask I first, him how he knows it. I first have to establish that he said that. No, you don't. You could go the other way around. <laughs> um, when you told me that it started when you left, when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton, where did you gain that knowledge from? Well, I'm going to object because his testimony a few minutes ago is that he did not recall making that statement. All right, I'll overrule that. Mr. Bradley, answer the question if you can. Repeat the question. <clears throat> when you told me that their relationship started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton, where did you obtain that knowledge from? It was... I was speculating. Um, I didn't have a, um,
No one told me I was speculating. 